Hi, welcome. Today's question is what kinds of recurring situations or people do you attract? So this is all about looking for patterns of behavior because we've all heard that say, keep doing things the same way, getting the same results. You won't have any change. And this is really bringing up a lot about, you know, patterns of behavior. And so it's something that's been really on my mind, um, particularly at this point, because um, for me, the number 11 seems to be very important. And I've been 11 years back in London and 11 years working on something. And there's kind of, it's brought me up about when I made changes before, when I was kind of in this kind of energy of, it's not working, do I do the same thing over and over again? Or do I have to look at something differently? Or has there been a, a way that I've been working over the last number of years that even though I'm aware of the pattern, I haven't quite walked away from it. So many of you will know that I was ticking all the boxes working at RBS in a director's role, but I just got to the stage where I recognized that I was choosing to work in an environment that wasn't particularly meeting my values or meeting my needs and I wasn't putting them first. And I had, since I had come back from traveling, I had, wanted to take more control of looking after myself, going around the world with a backpack on your back kind of changes your perspective, that you start to look at things differently, particularly looking at your own self-care, your own boundaries, um, what being more a, aware of the people that are coming around you and, and being attracted to. So here's like a, a whale story, but it's what's popped into my head. I went to Peru with two friends after I finished my first master's and they were going off to Peru for three weeks and I went along with them and one of them spoke Spanish, one of them picked up Spanish, I still don't speak Spanish and we we had a, an amazing time. <laughs> um, we still laugh about certain things because there's ups and downs and there's everything when three girls go off um, to a country on their own, particularly Peru, people weren't traveling there. and. We got on the Machu Picchu Trail for very, very cheap. You wouldn't be able to do that now. And, you know, there were things we were aware of. Um, like we went to this place where I knew, because two of the girls wouldn't wear glasses and I'm deaf. So it was kind of hear no evil, see no evil. But I picked up that there were people walking around with guns and we may have been heading into the wrong part of town. And we brought attention to that and then we moved out of it. So nothing happened didn't get raped didn't get murdered didn't get robbed um we we were we were aware of it we were particular about things that we were doing probably to the point of insulting sometimes people's ability to be trustworthy and again when i went back there you know i ended up in situations where i knew i felt instantly this isn't the right environment for me so i went and i asked for help to get out of it but i've met other people and I've met other people who've traveled and there's a story, there's some story of being robbed or there's some story of different things happening and it happens over and over again. And it's not till you start breaking it down that you start to look at the preparation or the planning or the ways. And that's not to say that people purposely go out to get raped, to get murdered or anything like that. It's, it's just bringing, uh, bringing attention in the extreme of sometimes we can attract situations or people into our lives that we don't necessarily want, but they're highlighting um, a lesson for us and an awareness for us, um, getting us more in tune with an intuition to say, this isn't the right place for you, Vivian, being in Baca isn't incredibly safe. You need to get yourself out of there um, because it's the poorest part of town. Or when you hear of somebody who they've been in Brazil and they go and they stand in a queue and get robbed because they didn't go back from the bank to put the money back in the hostel as being as being highlighted. So they're extreme examples of types of recurring situations or what happens or how we develop our awareness to bring things into our life. And what we want to bring in is nurturing self-care, wanting to bring in environments that are going to nourish or still they're still going to bring us lessons things are still going to happen there's going to be cuts and bruises and falls and all sorts of things but you can grow from it you can get that lesson from it and that's where i've been really considering that about what are 
what is the situation that I'm in now where I've played the same pattern with somebody expecting a different outcome and refusing to accept no matter how many ways it's shown to me, how many different um, it, ways and how many different times I say it, the pattern is the same. It's not going to change and accepting that. And that is the most important part, is that when we have those recurrent situations or people that are not in our best self-interest, in our best self-care, it's allowing ourselves to accept that, that our need is not going to be made and starting to dissemble the loyalty we have to that situation so that we can make a different choice and look at doing something differently for ourselves. And this, I believe, comes down to what we're going to do, I'm inviting you to do in the Just Stop lesson. It's what are the kinds of recurring situations or people that you are attracting into your um, life. Particularly at the moment, we've had Mercury retrograde, we're now gone into another retrograde, except this one's going to be even more fun, particularly if you're not into your emotions, because it's all about looking at Neptune and our emotional world and what kind of patterns are we attracting within that and are they meeting our needs or are we sacrificing our self-care in order to think that things will be different in the future and so within that of what kind of lessons um, might they be teaching about myself not only is it showing compassion and forgiveness is it also showing assertiveness and wanting to take self-responsibility for meeting one's needs for making things happen and that's definitely been coming up for me so much in terms of you know is this the situation i want to be in or is it that i want to let go of something because even though that's really going to maybe upset the apple cart a bit it might actually be the best thing for me because it'll be about following my heart which is a lesson in itself to put ourselves first to put our self-care first and that then ties into is what is your soul calling? What is your heart asking you to do at this time? And are you in clear about it? So using the feminine leadership um, definition that we use in Grow and Well, in terms of is this coming from your head, your ego, or is this something that's in your heart? Is this something that you've wanted to do for a really long time and waiting to appease other people instead of looking after self-care? Definitely been going on in my world about kind of having that push and I've seen it talking to clients over the last couple of weeks this push really to move into our hearts and saying you know what is it I really want what is going to give me emotional fulfillment what is going to engage my soul that I'm going to be okay with whatever falls because I know I'll be moving in the right direction and can I trust that will I trust myself enough to let that go and I feel that as we're coming to the end of pandemic and I was reading an article about how women have been particularly hit with the pandemic um, particularly if they're single um, and working for themselves and doing lots of things because we we talk an awful lot about equality in society i'm not a particular fan i know some people might think that's a bit mad that i'm not a fan of equality but actually men and women are different and they are meant to be complementary so equality in terms of pay yes all of that but in, in ter terms of expecting somebody to show up in a different um, modality or devaluing the types of relationship building creativity and um, ingen ingenuity that women offer and doing it in a way that's more masculine driven than actually taking time to understand how women evolve their knowledge that to me is you know we need to make room for both and um, that's important and so it's about you know where is this journey bringing to you if we have a system that is kind of just getting through the um the bottom lows of a pandemic but then expecting everything to go to normal but not kind of meeting those emotional needs or supporting people to understand the lessons of what they've learned or if their hearts have been cracked open because they've spent x amount doing something then they've spent the last 18 years feeling isolated all of that it needs a different type of skill it needs a different type of understanding and that's a lot about getting clear on what it is you want, what is your self-care, your self-care is unique to you. It's not just about sleep and food and rest. It's also about how you express yourself in the world, how you learn in the world, how you evolve so that the energy moves and that you can 
put a smile on your face and be happy. So that's all I'm going to leave with you for today. Remember, the first person one needs is oneself, mind, body and spirit. I'm Viv Bannigan. I'm the owner of Gornware Limited, a bespoke training and mentoring company based here in the heart of London. And I help women navigate change. They feel overwhelmed, tired, confused about the future. And they're seeking to understand their personal landscape and vision for their future. And we do that through several tools and resources. Our main flagship program is the MAP, which is all about getting giving women tools and resources to take back reins of their journey and move forward with confidence. So just a little few things from me. If you would like to know more, please visit our website. We have a free masterclass that all you need to do is to insert some details and you can download and do in your own time. And it is accompanied by a workbook and it's all about setting intention. It's a key thing for us to go on well that you work with heartfelt intention. We're also starting her leadership circles. So these will be on new and full moons on Saturday morning. So the Saturday nearest the full or the new moon it's starting with the new moon on the 10th of july there's only limited places i will put a link below to find out more information and if you'd like to contact us for anything please do schedule a call with me via our website so till next time have a wonderful day and goodbye